Funding for the Railways of Crotonia has been provided in part by our Patreon supporters. For as low as $1 a month, not only will you get access to all kinds of new videos before they're released and other development stuff, but also access to our Discord channel. And for $5 and above, not only do you get to get exclusive rewards, but also access to some of the models you might have seen in this video. To learn more, visit patreon.com slash themailontuner for more information on how you can get your pledge. And thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for sponsoring this video. The Railways of Crotonia has been brought to you in part by... Here at Super Bowl Lanes, we're about fun, community, and involvement. Whether you're at the grill or the alley, at Super Bowl Lanes, it's always a good time. At Super Bowl Lanes, we care about the importance of family, teamwork, community, and of course, fun. Super Bowl Lanes is a proud sponsor of the Meal on Tune channel. Super Bowl Lanes, let the good times bowl. What in the holy name of Hera was that? Of course, every little scotch you want a construction contract. <laughs> I wish I was as good a passenger train as Aldi. The conductor's not ready! Whoa. Hang on, it's going to be a bumpy ride ahead! Virginia Bay Docks. Where's the place exactly? It's on the east coast of this little country called Crotonia. There's lots of docks here, and this is one of the busiest. Huh. Rotten big boats. Leaving me to park on the pier to wait for ages to make deliveries of rust. Can't believe the nerve of some of these boats. Oh, hi, Bullstrode. What's gotten under your bumpers today? I've got a very important delivery of parts to take to Pinewood Island tonight, but the harbor's all booked up. I've to wait here until there's an open dock to be loaded. Oh, what's wrong with waiting around? I'm taking the day off to rest my wheels myself. Well, you don't have important cargo to tow today. Who knows how long I'll be waiting? Well, I've known of a busier day on the docks. Why don't I tell you the story of one of them? Well... I suppose I got nothing better to do. Well, have I got the story for you. It's a story about a little engine who wanted to do things right away. One day, the harbor down at Gradinia Bay was very busy. Lots of ships were sailing in and out of the docks, and there was a big shipment from Europe coming in shortly. The engines working the docks were rushed off their wheels as the cranes loaded cargo onto their flatbeds and freight cars. Where are these headed out again, dear? Zellgrip City Freight Yard for the gas and refrigerator containers. The rest go to the docks in Selgrim Harbor. Understood. <coughs> How much more coal does this blasted ship need? About six more wagons. They're parked by the supplier's yard. The ship just radioed in to say it's coming into the coast. I'm going out to bring it in. I'll fix the other tugs to help. Thanks, Tenzin. It soon became apparent that other engines were needed at the docks, since there was too much for the harbor yard engines to do on their own. Morning, Pepper P. Hi, Edward. Oh, Gordon, why is he? It's Tracy, Pete. Tracy. Oh, that's where 
I said to none. Anyway, where are you off to this morning? Some mail got misdelivered? Nope. I'm heading off to the docks. The docks? That's a busy place for you to work at. Yeah, but I've worked there before, so I can take care of myself there. Hope it all goes well, then. Good luck, youngster. Just mind the bigger work you're given. I will. Tracy made record time getting to the harbor. She couldn't wait to start work by the beautiful seaside. When she got there, Tencent and some other tugs had managed to get the ship into the port. It was huge, heavily loaded with goods, and ready for unloading and reloading. Tracy was rushing towards Emma and the ship, ready to double check what her jobs were, when... Hey! Watch where you're going, you dinky little engine! Important engines with more important freight coming through. Oh no, not Cerberus and Diesel 10. What are they doing here? They've come to help out with the heavy goods. What? Them? Why couldn't you get someone like the haulers at the Grothland docks? They're really busy, too. We didn't have a lot of engines free today with all the deliveries coming in, so we've had to work with all we've got. Well, I suppose that's understandable. So, what do you want me to do today? Shunting big trains on the main dock again? <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. Not this time. I need you to help Trix and Skip at the supplier's yard. They've got a lot of deliveries and materials to get out, so they need someone to help sort out the trains. Okay. Um, who's Trix and Skip? You'll find out. They're a nice couple of machines. Emma was right. Trix and Skip are as nice as they are hardworking. Trix the forklift zips about the yard loading cargo for the trains and trucks that come to the dock, while Skip takes garbage from the building sites and yards down to the dump. Whenever he's paying attention, that is. Rattling rods! Look at all this stuff! Oh, you must be Trix and Skip! We certainly are! And you've got to be... Oh. Ouch! Tracy! <laughs> Indeed I am. So, what do I have to shift? Oh, well, for a start, you can shunt those bricks and lumber together. They're going up to Prillum for the new townhouses. And then, you can get those empties to Cranky, so we can load up the special stepno stuff that just arrived for the mainland. I'm on it. I'll get it done in no time. Ugh. Flat. Down by the docks. That's the place to be. Down by the docks. The gateway to the sea. Down by the dockside, we are the team Working together, just like family Down by the docks, you're never on your own Down by the docks, it's really home from home Down by the dockside, down by the dockside Down by the dockside, it's where we want to be It's where we want to be. Later that afternoon, Diesel 10 and Cerberus were just heading out to the Gradinia Bay Goods Depot with a long line of cars when Diesel crossly rolled alongside. And where do you think you two are going? Another load of crummy wagons. What's so bad about that? We've got a load coming in from on those narrow gauges at the junction, and one of you has to take it. Ugh, don't see why it has to be us. We've been hauling all morning. I know someone who would. Hey, Diesel! What's up? Dockmaster Noisy just said you've got a special to pick up from the junction. Really? A special? Oh yes, some goats from the hills going down here. They need those wagons urgently. Wow, that's something for a little engine like me. Tracy, are you sure we should do that? And from orders of Devious Diesel? Hurry, ten cents! And delivery from the junction here at... Not yet, Dockmaster. Should be here soon, though. Well, what do you... Oh, no! Tracy had wasted no time getting to the junction. The cars were already waiting for her, freshly loaded up with heavy goods. 
Now, Tracy was not inexperienced at pulling good strains, but she'd never really hold good strains this heavy before, and usually the good strains were kept to the flatter parts of the railway, and she was finding out very quickly that they were a lot harder to control than she thought. Are you guys sure she's pulled the heavy goods before? Because it's not looking like that to me. Yeah, I'm getting vibes she's an amateur. My bluffer feels like a cut of Swatch, got it. For the love of love, why is she giving her the right away? We got the right away, good grief! Hey, like, guys, I got an idea, so hear me out. Why don't we, like, push you down the big hill a little bit? You know, not like in a mean way, just kind of like, you know, hey, teach you for next time kind of way. Not supposed to be hard or anything. Do you really want to do this right now? I mean, if it makes you guys happy. I'm having a fun ride back here. You know what, Joe? I don't always agree with you, but let's do this. Everyone in favor, clank. Good. Let's do it. We'll talk about good timing, because here it comes now. So is this going to be like an easy push on her? Because I'm not sure what the plan is here right now. Right. Only about a mile more, and we'll be... Uh, what the... Uh, uh, come on! Slow! Slow down! I don't ah! think so! <laughs> Tracy tried to apply her brakes, but it was too late! The cars are pushing her faster and faster down the line, and not even the brake van could help! Tracy and her cars were sent speeding along through the docks and down the line towards the old wooden pier. So, Joe, did you forget about the giant pin we're about to crash off of? I didn't know it was there. I thought we were going to go to the docks or something. Luckily, Tencent had been docking a sand barge near the pier and had set it up to make a makeshift arrestor bed when he saw her coming down. Oh, oh. Thanks, ten cents. I owe you one. No problem, mate. I'll go and fetch a crane. Then you can get some of that sand out of your valves. Because the tide was too low to lift her out, Tracy had to sit in the barge for some time. A little bit happened while she waited. Cars were delivered. Engines were found out and punished. And ships shouted, Anchors away! But even as Bonavista finally arrived to lift her out of the barge, Tracy still felt ashamed for causing an accident by jumping into a situation she wasn't prepared for. As the workmen got ready to lift Tracy out from the barge, Emma, Trick, Skip, and Luke all came to help out any way they could. Engine secured! Bring her up, boys! Now don't be hard on yourself, kid. It wasn't all your fault. Those three were looking for an easy way out of a situation, and you got tricked into it. From what I heard from these two, you were a big help. Yeah, you were a huge help getting all the deliveries out today. Even if you got a little sandy. Thanks, guys. And I learned something else, too. Well, what's, what's that? that? Ten cents to try out for the baseball team with his catching skills. <laughs> oh, I get it! Oh, she got you in sand! <laughs> And so, Tracy learned not to always jump into a job she wasn't ready for, and that she could do great work without needing to pull heavy trains. <laughs> well, it was silly for her to take that train all on her own. And anyway, are trains really that heavy? Well, trains can be a lot heavier than you think. And if they're really important, sometimes they need help from a friend. Let me tell you about my friend Russ, and the time he needed the help of a new friend to get the train moving. <laughs> Early one morning, Harry was struggling to get some freight cars moved from a siding. They were needed for a mixed traffic train that Donald and Douglas were to take to Nantasket Junction. Come on, come on! I'm gonna be late for my next job! He groaned. His wheels spun and spun. The reason why the cars weren't moving at all was because their brakes were set. But he didn't realize this and just kept on pulling and pulling. Come on! He groaned. I wish I was moving instead of standing still! Suddenly, the coupling between him and the first brake car broke, and Harry ran right into a siding, smashed through some buffers, and stopped halfway across an old tramp steamer. 
Luckily, no one was hurt, but Harry's front was badly bent. Skipper Stu and the Harbor Master came over to see if Harry was all right. Hmm. Well, the only major damage is bent buffers, said the Harbor Master. Oh, botheration, said Skipper Stu. Harry and Hamish were to collect the coastline flyer in an hour. Who can we get to take the train on such short notice? Luckily, Russ was close by and heard everything. I can take it, he called out. Are you sure, Russ? The harbor master called back. It's a tough train to pull. Of course. We've got to keep the trains to time, you know. Well, all right. But we've got to send Hamish to help out with the backlog while Harry's being mended. So you'll need to find another engine who can help you take the coastline flyer. Yes, ma'am, Russ tooted confidently. I can manage that. But as Russ got closer to Selgreb Bay Harbor, he remembered something he should have kept in mind before. The Coastline Flyer was an express goods train usually hauled by Harry and Hamish that stops at every harbor along the Seaside Railway, starting from Selgreb Bay and goes on to Groffland and then goes all the way down to Gardenia Bay at the end of the line. Russ was worried, but was sure that he could find someone at Selgreb Bay who'd be happy to lend a wheel, just in case the train was too heavy for him to pull alone. Hmm, well, looks like I'll just have to ask the first engine I meet if they'll be able to help me, he decided as he pulled into the bustling dockyard. As he sorted out the containers for his train, he saw a little tank engine sitting on a siding, waiting for help. Hello there, he said. You've got an interesting crane arm. Where's your hook? I'm a reach stacker. I have clamps instead of hooks. That's intriguing. I've never met a reach stacker engine before. Oh, beg pardon for not introducing myself. I'm Stepney. And my name's Russ. I've got a big freight train to take to Gradinia Bay, but I'm not sure if I can do it on my own. I'd be more than willing to lend a buffer, said Stepney cheerfully. I'm catching a ferry there anyway. Great, honked Russ. We'd better hurry if we're to get the goods delivered on time. As the two shunted together the loads to hook up, Russ told him about his work in Groflin and the many different engines he worked with, while Stepney told him about his time in Cortunia, in which he'd been visiting to be part of a great locomotive show at Selgreb City Sheds, and now had to return to his home in England, the Bluebell Railway. Russ and Stepney decided to take the train in two halves. Russ would haul the containers, and Stepney would haul the other loads, tankers, fish, stone, produce, and products from the factories around the city. When all was shunted and ready, the two set off down the seaside railway with their important train. Unfortunately, they didn't get very far, as the first stretch to get out of the harbor was uphill. They tugged and pulled, but no matter what, the engines couldn't get their trains up the slope. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Russ. This train seems to be a bit tougher to haul up than I thought. You're right, sighed Russ. The coastline flyer is too heavy for both of us to pull separately. And if we leave later, we won't have time to uncouple each of the cars for the docks. Then, as if by magic, both engines came up with the same idea. They decided to arrange each of their trains into two new halves. Cars for Groffland were coupled to Stepney, and cars for Gardenia Bay were coupled to Russ. Both brake vans were coupled together, then Stepney with his train, and then Russ and his train. With an engine hauling at the front and an engine to haul from the middle, the two could get up the hill and on their way down the line. The rearranged train also made it easier to drop off and pick up cargo at the two stops. Stepney's cars were uncoupled and new cars of steel, fish, and lumber were coupled off. They made it to the docks just in time. Well, it was a pleasure to work with you today, Stepney. It's a pity you have to go home now. Likewise, Russ. But I'm glad your crew have such a good friend. Keep everything in order back home, and who knows? Maybe I'll visit here again. Goodbye, Russ, and Godspeed.
Russ then rolled home, confident, ready for bed, and glad he had found himself a new friend. Well, Mrs. Bayswater was really proud of Russ after he saved the day and the train. So much so, she let him go on a vacation to San Locomota. Puh! Does he really need a holiday? I move cargo all the time, but I never get to go to India or Brazil on a leisure cruise. Well, Russ did a lot for the harbor too, and while he was on his trip, he missed out on some really fun things, like when Skipper Stroob tried out pulling out passenger train. Skipper Stu is a very officious engine. Being the Dockmaster's diesel of Groflin Harbor, he always works to make sure the docks are tick-tock and on the clock. Unfortunately, this attitude does have a tendency to cause some, uh, problems. One night, as the seaside locomotives were cooling their fireboxes and engines, Skipper Stu was rolling into the roundhouse. The engines were surprised. What are you doing here tonight, Skip? asked Oliver. Passenger detail. The Seaside Rail Co. scheduled a test run for our new express passenger service for tomorrow, but the new engine she bought hasn't arrived yet, so I, of all engines, am to take the train tomorrow. That sounds lovely, said Emma. Not when you're the Dockmaster's Diesel. I feel like I should stay here and keep things running. But we all help to do that, said Jones the Steam, even whilst we have engines out of action. Like how I'm taking care of the containers while the Russ is on holiday, said Gripper the Crane. Suppose you've got a point, said Skipper Stu. In that case, I'll keep this passenger run on the clock. And with that, he went straight to sleep. Next morning, however, showed that not everything would be on the clock. Skipper Stu, keeping in proper navy fashion, woke himself up well before dawn. Unfortunately, the ship was still far out at sea by the time he got there. Trains came in and out of the terminal, and buses putt-putted in and out for a good hour while he was waiting. At last, the big cruise ship carrying his passengers finally arrived and quickly boarded his coaches. Stu's train would only stop at the harbour stations, so the coaches were special for the long trip. There was a brake coach, a luggage van, a sleeper, a diner, and a lounge, all coupled together for the long journey. At last, everyone was on board, and Skipper Stu was ready to go. Tick tock, we're on the clock, off we go lads, he called out, but the coaches weren't ready. The conductor's not ready! The conductor's not ready! They called out, but it was no use. Skipper Stu was moving. Had he not been flagged down, he would have left the luggage van and the brake coach behind. Skipper Stu felt very embarrassed. All the way to their first stop in Grufflin, it seemed like nothing went right. Because they were late, they were switched off on a loop siding to let Yamon hurry past with some freight cars. Then, he ran into trouble with Donald at the salt mines. And to make things worse, the inclines proved very troublesome for Skipper Stu, causing the coaches to rock about and give the passengers an unpleasant experience. Passengers trying to sleep were given an unwanted massage. Hot cakes and bagels flew across the diner, and passengers trying to take pictures were given blurry results. At last, they made it to their first stop. The grumbling passengers boarding the mainline connections and ferry boats of the dock got off, and some new passengers got in. Harry and Hamish, the express freight diesels, were surprised to see their boss worn out and stressed. Oh, how do engines manage this? I've run this train to time, and I've run into nothing but trouble. Well, we're not experts on the matter, said Harry. But passenger trains aren't like freight, said Hamish. They're right, you know, said a voice. It was Olwen, who'd been hauling Isabel and Dulcie while Oliver was working at the salt mines. Passengers are not meant to be treated like soldiers, and coaches aren't meant to be treated like cars. You need to be gentle, smooth, and above all, relaxed. So, don't order them on board? Correct. 
and don't rock them about. Correct. Just be relaxed and keep steady. Just then, the conductor blew his whistle. All aboard! He called out as Skipper Stew tooted to say, All clear! And now, knowing that the passengers and luggage were safely aboard, he started off. The ride up to Grudinia Bay was much smoother. Skipper Stu didn't run into any loop sightings or jerk about on inclines. He just hauled his way up quickly but steadily. The passengers could sleep comfortably in the sleeper. The diners could enjoy their lunches of hot hamburgers, sandwiches, wraps and soft drinks. And sightseers could take in the beauty of the Crotonian coast. And when they arrived at the harbour, Skipper Stu waited patiently for the passengers to reboard his coaches. Then, they all travelled down the same route home, stopping at each stop without fail. Finally, he made his last stop late into the night. His passengers boarded the final cruise ship bound for the mainland, and the express coaches were shunted away to the yards. Well done, said Dockmaster Eric. I heard you improved a great deal after what happened this morning, and the express has been a great success. Therefore, I am proud to say... Thank you, good Eric, interrupted Stu. But I do have my Dockmaster's duties to fill. Oh, I wasn't going to have you take over. Then... What were you going to say? But I must stop here, I'm afraid, or I'm going to spoil the next story. <laughs> Boy, he must have looked silly bumping and banging those passengers around. Well, he didn't, but he also learned that the way he usually does things wasn't the best way, and that he had to keep cool and take things easy. So there was something about a new express engine. I don't think I've met them yet. I, I, I mean, I, not that I'm interested or anything. <laughs> well, that's another story to tell. Here's what happened when Audrey came to town. One morning, Sasha the little local puller engine was at the seaside roundhouse. She noticed Emma turning around to go to Selgra Bay instead of Gridinia Bay. What are you going? Don't you have something to do? Not yet. Dockmaster Noisy wants me to welcome the newcomer. There is a newcomer? There was. A new engine had arrived to Cretunia. Her name was Audrey, and she was quite a different engine compared to many of the other Crotunians. She had a big, bulky buffer beam, smart, dark blue paintwork, and a big, sturdy tender. She was about to go on her maiden voyage, and a large group of engines were there to welcome the new engine to the crew, with the newly christened Seaside Soarer. Hello, welcome to our railway. Let me know if you need anything shunted. How much coal can your tender carry? But Audrey was very quiet. She didn't seem to care much about the questions and comments. As Sasha arrived backwards, Audrey's first train set off for Brooklyn Harbor. Sasha saw the powerful engine roar out of the docks. She was impressed by how strong she was and how long and fancy her new carriages were. But then she remembered. She was a very small train with very small carriages. Carriages that had to load outside the platform. It made Sasha feel very lowly indeed. Sasha's job was to pull the local, a small passenger train that stopped at every station to drop off all kinds of passengers and workers. Captains of Selgra Bay docks, miners and crane operators to Bartlett Bay, tourists to Groflin Harbor, beachgoers to Coast View Junction, and workers to Gradinia Bay Junction. The days were long and busy for the little engine, but she loved looking at all the different things on her route. Cliffs covered in moss, waves rippling along the coastline, trees standing proud and strong on their perches, and small seaside towns busily going about their days. But whenever Audrey passed by, roaring with her carriages and important passengers in tow, it always made her feel silly. I look at the scenery, making my passengers late, while Audrey is fast and on time. Later that day, as she was on her way back, she ran down the little line on the cliffs of the salt mines, where she found a very shocking sight. There, blowing steam from what looked like every cylinder of her boiler, was Audrey. Are you alright, Audrey? asked Sasha. 
Well, started Audrey in a very flat voice. Pistons are pumping, water pressure is good, steam pressure, not so much. I do need to get these passengers moving again though. They're catching a ship to Britain at Rofflin Harbor. Then, Sasha got an idea. I can take your passengers to the docks. That's my next stop with my train. Oh, but my carriages aren't fancy and glamorous. They don't have dining bars or sleeper beds. Just plain old seats and luggage racks. Well, do you get your passengers to their places on time? Well, not all the time. Sometimes the scenery takes away my focus and- I mean I don't blame you, said Audrey, to the shock of Sasha. This railway's got some pretty looking scenery. But the point is, if you're steaming and you got coaches, you're good. You got this little bud. With that, Sasha had found confidence she'd never had before. Whistling, Peep peep! Get in quickly please! Audrey's passengers for Groflin climbed into her carriages, and the little engine set off for the docks. Sasha's carriages were heavier than usual, but she was determined to make it to the docks on time before the ship left for Britain. Her funnel was firing smoke and steam like never before. Her pistons rattled as she built up steam, and she was moving so much past her usual top speed that a local fisherman lost his hat to the sea, where a whale found it a fine new addition to its Sunday best. Finally, the little engine reached the docks, just in time for the ship to collect its last load of passengers. Then, Sasha hurried over to Skipper Stew. We've got an emergency! Audrey's broken down near the salt mines! We need the breakdown gang and dock as soon as possible! Leave it to me, said Skipper Stew. Doc and the workmen carefully examined Audrey, whose steam had dampened down quite a bit from earlier. Duck had already taken her carriages away, and Sasha had let Oliver take the last of her passengers home to bring over tools to mend her. Well, you're very lucky, Audrey, said Doc. You just had a tad too much pressure buildup in your pistons. Common issue with a new build. Thanks, Doc. But you know, I'd have been a bigger goner without Sasha. She was the real hero of this situation. If she hadn't run so gallantly, a lot of people would have missed their boat. Wish I had the same control you seem to with all of those hills, I tell you. Sasha couldn't help but blush a little. It made her feel bigger and stronger than she thought she was. Audrey and Sasha are now firm friends. Audrey sometimes asks Sasha for help, but sometimes has to remind Sasha not to keep comparing herself to her. She's an amazing engine, just the way she is. Audrey's always a great friend to see around, and she knows how wonderful the docks can be. Quiet water. <laughs> There's nothing special about the docks, especially when you're bored with nothing to do. Ten cents wouldn't say so. Yeah? What's that? He'd say, you'd be surprised what treasures you can find at the docks after all. He did come across some treasure by accident once. Treasure? What do you mean, treasure? Well, let me tell you about the treasure of ten cents. Theodore and ten cents love working on the Protunian coast. They work hard bringing ships into ports, moving barges, or generally helping out along the docks. One morning, Ariel was at the pier assigning each of the tugs their work for the day. Everyone else had been sent by Eric to help out at the other harbors, so the rest of the tugs had been kept busy. Sunshine, we need you on the oil tanker contract. Warrior, you and Top Hat have garbage to collect. And Theodore and Tencent, you're with me on the Beamer Island construction site this morning. I'll see if we're clear to get Bonavista and Barrington. All the tugs were ready to go to work. But Top Hat was cross about having to have garbage before taking an important ship out to sea, and George taking his place at the car ferry dock in Gradinia Bay. So he took it out on ten cents. Of course Ariel's got you on a construction contract, that's all you little switches are good for. Well Sunshine has got a tanker to take out to sea later, so we're good at doing big work too. Oh please, if Ariel really needed you for a big job, she would have given it to you then, hmm? and the uppity railway tugs fumed away. 
Take no notice of him, Pug Warrior, as he left the pier. He's just a little grumpy, that's all. Hey, said Sunshine. Ariel and Eric know you're a tough tug. As he and Theodore left with Bonavista and Barrington for Beamer Isle, he was still venting. Count on Topite to say our switches are too small for real work. Winston Shawin carried out this big ship from Europe the other way, and we had no problems there. But Theodore wanted the best for all his friends and tried to ease him down. I'm sure Top Hat didn't mean all of it. You've helped him and the other big tugs out of problems before, like when Sunshine was friend when he first came to your harbor. This made Tencent feel a lot better, and the two tugboats soon started swapping stories all the way to the building site. Ariel's job for the tugs at Beamer Isle was to help build a new wooden dock for tourist boats to visit the island and explore. The lighthouse that gave the island its name was also going through repairs, so Griff and Tiff, the crane tugs, were busy near the little island too. With Bonavista lifting pieces from Barrington into place and garbage barges of junk and scrap to haul off, it was towering work for everyone involved, especially when Griff and Tiff showed off. Look at this old tire rack found, Brad Griff. Can it beat this old traction wheel from the old power station? replied Tiff. But no matter how hard the work got, or how showboaty the crane tugs got, Tencent and Theodore were still working hard. Later, as Tencent was off to the garbage docks with another load of rusty tin cans and junk from the bottom of the island, he was rounding a boy to mark where the bay began, when all of a sudden... Whoa! Screamed Tencent. Look out! screamed the ship as it swerved violently out of the way to avoid hitting ten cents. She turned so suddenly that some of her cargo swerved off its base. Some stayed on deck. But one container wasn't so lucky. Oh no! I'm so sorry for spilling your cargo. Don't panic, man, said the still breathless ship. I'm lucky that wasn't empty. Sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going. You're- Let me guess, said Ten Cents. Really small? No, said the ship. You're pretty easy to spot. Just hard to save when you've got a full load. Could you get that container back, though? Said the ship. I need it for some cargo I'm picking up from Panama. Ten Cents said it would be no problem, and he hurried off to find Bonavista and Ariel for help. Sometime later, Ariel and Bonavesta had gotten the ship, whose name was Shirley, to guide her hook down into the bay. A group of other boats had gathered around the spot where the sandwich was being done, and Griff and Tiff were teasing Tencent about the ordeal. Always make it a mess. That's what a switcher's good for, snapped Griff. Fitting a tiny tug could lose a big container, whispered Tiff. Okay, Tencent, called Ariel. Bring Bonavista near me. Everyone was surprised. The job was done! We've got work to do, complained Grip and Tiff. Is it a monster? Trembled Scuffy, the tiniest tug on the harbor. Just bring it down! You're not gonna believe what we found! And so, Bonavista was moved, and her hook lowered, and lowered, and lowered, until... I've hit something, called Bonavista. Probably an old junk barge, said Tiff. That's what my fishing's always found. But when Bonavista raised her hook, it wasn't junk at all. It was a chest, a big old wooden chest. No, it can't be, said Griff in shock. Is it? Silver and sticks, it's treasure, called Warrior. Ariel and Bonavista had reeled up a treasure chest. It was filled like a jelly donut with rubies from long ago. It must have been swept over from the great wreck of old 45, said old Olsen the Navy tug. Good find, Ariel. Well, I wouldn't have found it without 10 cents. All the tugs gave a huge chorus of toots. Hooray for 10 cents' mistake! Just then, Top Hat came around with a barge of scrap. I say, what's going on here? I've been getting out the rubbish in twice the time Warrior can, so what's so special that's left me in a bayside blockade? Everyone couldn't help but laugh. That was the biggest news the harbor had seen in weeks. Everyone was talking about ten cents and the amazing booby dredge. <laughs> It would take more than a rotting wood chest to really impress me. Well, 
there was bigger news a while ago. Let me tell you about my friend Charlie and Neg's headliner. Megara is a reporter for the Crotonian Gazette, the national newspaper for the whole of Crotonia. This means that she often goes out and about looking around Crotonia to write about events going on. And on this particular day, she was off to Crofton Harbor to cover a very exciting event. Ah, morning, Meg. Morning, Scrooge. How's life in the city? Oh, same old, same old. When you've got a demigod for a husband, cruise ship rescues just on the docks within the week, express train rescues the month before, and a runaway freight train tail just a few days ago, life's never that boring. <laughs> oh, you never fail to bring a laugh. All set for today's scoop. Oh, you know it. When you hear a queen's coming to Crotonia, it's always a big scoop to catch. All clear for departure? Fire away, hotshot. At Grothlin Harbor, there was energy in the sea air as Skipper Stew began the working day for the other engines. Wakey, wakey, lads! It's a big day for the harbor! You have given us a few more minutes there, Skip. Oh, not today, Montague. The Queen is coming, and we've got a tight schedule to run. Morning, lads. Sorry we're late. We've had an early start. Hi. 4 a.m. freights got sent out to make sure everything got sent on time. Indeed. Especially when old Gloucester needs a cargo out pronto. How are you doing over there? I'm all set for loading, pals. Just give me a shout when you're ready. Stupendous, Gloucester. Right then, I'll have to give you a job for the day fast. I've got a quick meeting at Selgrip Harbor before the docking. Duck and Yemen, collect your coaches for passenger detail. Emma, today you're shunting at Virginia Bay docks. Get going, will you? Harry and Hamish, help the twins with the express freight. Russ, you're cleaning up the container yard today. And as for you, Charlie, you've got a special. Wow! A special? Why, yes. You'll be in charge of cleaning up the ferry terminal and ensuring all the engines get to their proper lines when they arrive. There's going to be plenty today, so I want you to make sure the ferry terminal is still under order when I get back. I'm counting on you, Charlie. Sure thing! Wait, which queen is... See you in a few, Charlie! Have a great day, everyone. Let me know how it goes. Well... Off to the grind! Meanwhile, out on the main line, Olwen was chugging along happily pulling a freight train to Gradinia Bay. When Spencer came puffing down the line. Morning, slow coach! Oh, good morning, Spencer! Off to meet the Queen, I'm guessing. Indeed I am! They're only allowing the finest to come to the arrival of her liner, after all. Well, I think I'm very fine, too. I'm a Gresley design like you, you I'm know. I'm pretty sure Gresley didn't throw a bunker and saddle tank onto a tender engine's design. So, what do you and Hercules get up to when you're not bogged down with work? A fair bit. Walks around the park, swimming at Ariel's beach, the occasional social gathering at home. But just being with him's always nice. Such a sweet big old lug. But reporting's just as fun, eh? Huh? In a way. Nothing like a healthy dose of adventure to keep a couple running. Herc had some teaching to do in the state, so he wasn't able to pop up today. Though, it can be a little lonely at times, with not many people to talk to on some occasions. In any case, I'm sure Ariel will be there too. What in the holy name of Hera was that? Bless me, bagpipes! Hang on, it's going to be a bumpy ride ahead! I'll surely beat you this time! Oh, certainly not! I'm more modern than you! Uh-oh. Thanks for the fast load-up! See you next week, fellas! Morning, little Charlie! Morning, Russ! Morning, Gordon! Boy, you seem happy today! Wouldn't you be if you had some of the most important people in the whole of Crotonia on your express? Like Lunette the Clown or Charlie Chalk, perhaps? <laughs> Morning, Gordon! I'm the real company's representative today. I've brought Mrs. Ella to see the visitors. Oh, that's great, Tilly! Oh, that reminds me. You'll be parked on track five, and Gordon, you're going to be on track six with Sir Reginald. Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. Oh, morning, Harrison. 
about had a little race for the way up and uh, i think i broke my suspension springs well blow me down how are we going to get to the docks now hold on i've got an idea back at grufflin harbor the arrival of the ship was coming closer and closer while charlie's cool was getting smaller and smaller Whoa! Mind your tracks! You okay, little fella? Surely, sure! Yeah, sure thing! Just gotta clear the yards and, and get the tracks tidied and guide the visitors in and and, and uh, make sure things are, are ship-shaped for Skipper when he comes back in and... Charlie? Yeah, Russ? It's okay to ask for help, you know. Huh? What do you mean? Well, but Skipper wanted me to do this job myself. I mean... I've worked in the docks hard enough for a big chance like this. But it's all right to get a little help in times like these. Yeah, that's what friends are yeah, for. You're probably right. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'll take care of guiding the engines in while Harry and Hamish shift the goods to the yards right here. On it. it. Russ, you sort out the deliveries coming into the warehouse. No problem. <laughs> Any sign of anyone yet? Um, yes, we got one. Hey, Olwen, Olwen, over here. Engine down, engine down. We need help. Oh, my Spencer, whatever happened to you? Uh, knocked up my suspension springs. My crew's already radioed the works for a pickup, but now my VIPs will be late for the Queen's arrival. Well, you're in luck then. I'm on the way to the docks myself. I'm delivering this load of supplies for the ferry terminal and picking up the Queen and her guests. <gasps> you? A VIP engine? I wasn't just made for freight work, you know. All right, you two. Enough chit-chat. Time to get this show back on the road. Olwen? Off to the docks. Get well soon, Spencer! I hope so. Meg got to the docks just before the docking could even start. When the liner did arrive, however, it was a wonderful sight. The crowd roared as the ship was guided into the terminal. Ugh, oh, what a godly sight. Haven't seen a celebration this wild since Dionysus got invited to last year's New Year's party. Whoa! A skipper! Oh, I, uh... I hope you didn't mind that. Um... Don't panic, Charlie. Ross and the twins told me everything. You did a good job on your first leadership job on the harbor. And you did a brave thing, too. Something that requires a great deal more courage. What's that? You let your friends help out with a big job. <laughs> Thanks a bunch, Skip. Oh, by the way, I didn't get a chance to know or ask with all the work these past few days, but which queen is arriving? Engines and cranes! It is a pleasure of the Grafton Harbor Ferry Turtle Crew to welcome to the country of Crotonia for the very first time... Queen of the Riverdale, the Royal Family! <laughs> all that hype for some ice queen? Well, she is pretty famous. I suppose so, but, you know, I was expecting someone fancier, like a Spanish queen, or, or a French queen, or a Dairy Queen. She has ice powers, Strong Bad. How many queens do you know that have ice powers? Well, I don't know any queens. Scrooge McDuck, a pleasure to meet you again. You know them, Scrooge? Well, when you're a business magnet like me, you've got to have your odd connection to do. Oh my gosh, are you the Mega? Uh, huh? The wife of Hercules, by any odd chance? How... how do you know me? We have a copy of your fantastic story on the Daisy Cruiser Rescue on the ship. And we heard from our friends about your fantastic adventures with the legendary Hercules! <laughs> well, perhaps I am that Megara. Scrooge, would you mind? Not a problem! Wow! What was it like during the big rescue? Well, it was quite an adventure, really. There was a commotion out at sea, and everyone was worried down at the dockyard. And then I got a shot. And so that day, there were quite a few headliners often on the front page. Charlie had handled his first big job in the harbor. Spencer was left out of the party. 
Owen served as a royal engine, and Meg had not only had a great story, but had ended up making some great new friends. Wasn't that an exciting tale? All full of thrills, spills, and surprises! Alright, alright, I get the idea. So, what do you think of the docks now? Well, I suppose it's not all bad hanging around the docks sometimes. <laughs> it beats sitting out on a beach all day. Attention, Bulstrode! Tilly has arrived at Dock 3 with your consignment of parts! Oh, finally! Well, I can't stay sitting around listening to stories all night. I've got real work to do. You know, that reminds me of when Tilly went on a seaside trip. Who's up for a sing-along? here on the harbor. It's nice to share stories with you and with people who's ever around to listen. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a lovely day. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And thanks for stopping by at the docks.
Somebody get this freaking duck away from me! <laughs> Funding for the Railways of Crotonia has been provided in part by our Patreon supporters. For as low as $1 a month, not only will you get access to all kinds of new videos before they're released and other development stuff, but also access to our Discord channel. And for $5 and above, not only do you get to get exclusive rewards, but also access to some of the models you might have seen in this video. To learn more, visit patreon.com slash themilontuner for more information on how you can get your pledge. And thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for sponsoring this video. The Railways of Crotonia has been brought to you in part by... Here at Super Bowl Lanes, we're about fun, community, and involvement. Whether you're at the grill or the alley, at Super Bowl Lanes, it's always a good time. At Super Bowl Lanes, we care about the importance of family, teamwork, community, and of course, fun. Super Bowl Lanes is a proud sponsor of the Meal on Tune channel. Super Bowl Lanes, let the good times bowl. Thank you.